Blog Talk Radio. Bismillah. <laughs> Imam Malik 
we can say among the arba mazahib we can say the most strong mazhab is mazhab imam malik radiallahu anhu because some of those even for uh, uh, mazahib some of them are his students and imam malik is the first one wrote a book we can say a book by or the book by authentic ahadith like ashabul ahadith that is muwatta imam malik radiyallahu anhu he wrote a muwatta malik that is the book imam uh, bukhari and imam muslim they took their experience the way imam malik built that book called muwatta malik how he arranged the ahadith so some you think that oh maybe the first book, the fourth book in ahadith is sahih bukhari no after the quran the fourth book we can say after the quran is muwatta malik after the muwatta malik is sahih bukhari after the sahih bukhari is sahih muslim we cannot put imam in sahih bukhari on top of the book of imam malik radiyallahu anhu because imam bukhari take his experience learn the way imam malik arrange those ahadith and make them as a book and sincere to ahadith the chain of the ahadith riwayat they all follow the way of imam the way imam malik used radiyallahu anhu to know this hadith is authentic or this hadith is daif or this hadith is marfu or this hadith is mawquf or majazi or mursal or maktu they take the experience from his knowledge and his full step to arrange the hadith you will see some brothers who say oh they don't believe none of what imam malik was they don't know the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam described imam malik to the sahaba before he came and he have many students because of what he was in masjid in nabawi give lecture whoever came to him he have many students some from africa asia america any muslims has they enter to the masjid in nabawi they find the sheikh giving the lecture some of them will offer themselves sheikh i will be your student but some of them will remain in medina they they, they don't they don't want to go back to their, their countries because of the knowledge they will get from the sheikh and the imam so risala is a very well known book in mazhab malik so we should know that if you are following the mazhab malik we know that we are following the most strong mazhab in al mulfiq fiqh also is very important in our life fiqh because the knowledge separated to the different branch you have ulum al ahadith ulum al quran tarikh fiqh fiqh always came to explain us to know how to worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and without fiqh we cannot understand even the quran without fiqh we cannot understand even a hadith in a certain way we cannot understand it and they also take their a hadith they build these books like risala muwatta they don't just jump and do it they take the knowledge from the a hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the hadith the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam they pick the a hadith all hadith is concerning about ibadah when you hear the fiqh fiqh mean ibadah like all the hadith is concerning about how you can worship allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the correct way
So the fifth is very important. Like you know, when you are performing your salam, you have some mistake, how you can correct your mistakes? When you add or you reduce, how you can correct all, you cannot know that if you don't know the emotion. So it's the most important knowledge after the Quran in our Islam. It's important. That's why the Prophet Man arad Allah bihi khayran yufaqimu fi al-kin. Leta kulli alimu al-faqim. Walakin li kulli faqihin alim. It's not every scholar is faqih, like he's, 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 he's a faqih. You can see some scholars, they don't know much about the fiqh. But they know the ahadith. But every faqih, La Buddha and Yari full ahadith. But Ali will think the scholar of the, 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 about the fiqh, he will know the ahadith because almost the hadith and fiqh they go together. So we can start, inshallah. Yeah. Okay, 
Tony, we, it's a city in Tony's. That is the Muhammad Abdullah ibn Zayd he born. Medina came to this. And the Arabs, that is their nature, they are other. Like some of the people, they will, uh, like your, your middle name or your last name will be either your father or the city you are from. But when you become a well-known scholar, most of the time they will give you the city you are from. Like Imam Bukhari. Even Imam Malik. Some say it's a sheikh of Medina, the city of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Malik, only once he go out of the city of Medina, one time he traveled out of the city. All his life he was remained in Medina, give lecture to his students. They say only one he traveled to follow one sheikh because he hear that the sheikh have some hadith about concerning about the fit. He traveled to go to the sheikh and get that hadith and come back to Medina. But all his time he based in Medina. Imam Malik radiallahu anhu continues. Alhamdulillah alladhi ibtada al insanu insana bi ni'matihi wa sawwarahu fil arham bi hikmatihi wa abrazahu ila ila rizqihi wa ma yassara lahu min rizqihi wa allamahu ma lam yakun ya'lam wa kana fadlullahi alayhi adhiha and from this conversation, we will understand that um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us the knowledge we don't know. That is the nature of mankind. Why? We can understand. Okay, we go to the universities. How we can say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teach us some knowledge we don't know. Yes, he's right. When he created Adam alayhi salatu wa salam. Wa in kala rabbu kalil malaika ti inni jailu fil abdu khalifa. Kalu wa taj'alu fiha man yusilu fiha wa yasuku dima. Wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdika wa nukaddisu lam. قال إني هذا ما نفعل وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها الله سبحانه وتعالى بدي كريت آدم عليه الصلاة والسلام he give him some kind of knowledge because Allah سبحانه وتعالى know that آدم will be replaced ملائكة in this earth be خليفة because before we came here there was a malaika, the angels. They was here establishing the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship him. They never disobey him. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided from his own knowledge that Adam will came after them and he gave some kind of knowledge to Adam. We don't know before because he know that there will be exam between the malaikas and the Adam. Whoever win the exam, that will be remain here. So that is why he said, he gave us some kind of knowledge. We don't know that before. Like, you know, this is mountain, this is river, trees, fire, apple, bananas, all those names. Allah SWT gave us those knowledge before we came to this earth. That is why when the Malaika, they say, oh Allah, you will remove us from the earth. You will bring the Adam. And you know that we have funny feeling that they will disobey you and they will kill each other, fight in each other, tell us in each other, destroy each other. For the any little knowledge you give it to them, they will try develop that knowledge to destroy themselves. Like weapons all those things created by us and we are destroying ourselves for our own knowledge. Allah says, Oh, I know something you don't know. That is why he said, 
Allah SWT give us knowledge, some knowledge we don't know. When the exam came, the malaikas, Allah SWT said, can you name me the fire? The malaikas, they don't know because they don't need it. Water, they don't need it. They don't know how to say it's water. Mountains, they cannot say this is mountains. Trees, they cannot say this is trees. Because where they, are, they will go live, they don't need that. But we have to come here, we need to know those things. That's why he said, وَعَلَّمَهُ مَا لَمْ يَكُنْ يَعْلَمُ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us some knowledge, teach us some knowledge, make us to know certain things we don't know them before. And without him, we cannot know those things. So what that means, that is the honor and the respect and the love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has for us as a human beings. So we have to respect him for that and give our thanks. We can always, we have to say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay. وَنَبَّعُهُ بِآثَارِ سُنَعَتِهِ وَأَأَذَّرَ إِلَيْهِ عَلَىٰ أَلْسِنَةِ الْمُرْسَلِينَ الْخَيْرَةُ مِنْ خَلْكِهِ الْخَيْرَةُ مِنْ خَلْكِهِ فَهَدَى مَنْ وَفَكَّهَهُ بِفَضْلِهِ وَعَدَلَّ مَنْ خَذَلَهُ بِعَدْلِهِ وَيَسَّرَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ لِلْيُسْرَى وَسَرَعَ صُدُورَهُمْ لِلذِّكْرَى فَآمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ بِأَلْسِنَتِهِمْ النَّاتِقِينَ وَقُلُوبُهُمُ الْمُخْلِسِينَ بما آتاهم به بما آتاهم به رسله وكتبه عاملين وتعلموا ما علموه ووقفوا عند ما حده واستغاثوا بما أحل لهم أما حرم عليهم The life is about that. Halal or haram. That's what he said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates us. He made two things. Halal, haram. That's why the prophet said, Al-halal bayyin. He said, the halal is clear. It's clear for us. But there's a some mix of between halal and haram. He said, anything you have doubt about it, leave it. Like you go to the meat, mar- meat market, they say, oh, you say, brother, this is halal. But you look at the brother, you think that how the brother can afford from halal, bring it here and say it's halal. You have two men, leave it, let you go. And sometimes it's happened. Because it's a business, you will find some brothers will say, hey, it's halal, but none of what they have is halal. Because of what? They just want to Muslims money. In New Jersey, where I'm living, I see the Chinese have restaurants, they are not Muslims. But they say, I'm in restaurant, halal restaurant. So I say, how can you believe that someone will sell halal to you and he or she is not a Muslim? That is something there. A Muslim, as a Muslim, you have to be very intelligent. As a Muslim, you have to be very aware what's going on around you, and you have to use your talent in the Quran, Sunnah, the Prophet history, the Sahabas, 
they was very intelligent and they was very smart. Being the Muslim is not meaning that you have to be in the masjid or you have to be in the street like people have to look down on you because you don't know nothing wrong. The good Muslims will be very smart. And you have to be very intelligent and aware of anything going around you. You look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about what's going around you, your food, your clothing, anything. Before you do, think what Allah say. What did the Quran say? What did the Sunnah say? Before you move. That is why our life is about halal haram. Either you in the halal or you in the haram. He goes anywhere. You see the sister, you want her, or sister see the brother, you want him, let him go to the halal way. You see this money, you want the money, and it's not belong to you, find that money in halal way. Our life is two things. Either you believe in halal, or you will believe in halal. That's why he told you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bima, and most of the things Allah SWT make it haram for us he give us chance sometimes to get those things to save our life for a certain period but after that period it's not halal for you like you walking in the post the poor and you don't have no food and no hope that you will find the food. You came just found the pork dead. And even it's not a zabiha. The fiqh give you chance to take and the Quran, the, this is the ayah from the Quran. Pick some from that meat and you can eat so that you can think that you can save your life and go. But you, you don't have to take anything with you to go with it. But after that, not meaning that the pork is halal for you. At that moment, it's halal for you to save your life. But after you eat, leave it there. Don't even take even one piece of it with you. You say, when I'm hungry, I eat again. No. But it's not halal for you, but at that moment, it's halal for you. Amma ba'am. أَعَانَنَ اللَّهُ وَإِيَّاكُمْ عَلَى رِعَايَةِ وَدَاعِيهِ وَحِبِّهِ أَمَّا أَوْدَعَنَ اللَّهُ مِنَ الشَّرَائِيهِ فَإِنَّكَ سَعَلْتَنِ أَنْ أَكْتُبَ لَكَ جُمْلَةً مُخْتَصِرًا مِنَ الْوَاجِبِ الْأُمُورِ الْدِيَانَةِ مِمَّا تُنْتِقُ بِهِ الْأَلْسِنَةُ وَتَعْتَقِدُهُ الْكُلُوبُ وتعمله الجوارح وما يتصل بالواجب من ذلك من السنن من المؤكدها ونوافلها ورغائبها وشيء من الآداب من منها والجمل من الأصول الفقه والفنونه وفنونه على مذهب الإمام مالك بن أنس رحمه الله تعالى. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist both us and you in taking care of what he has entrusted us with and imposed into his sharia. You have asked me to write a short treaty for you about what is obligatory in the day. Okay, stop there. A little bit. You see, he sees student, ten sheikh. We are following the matter of Maliki. And you always sit on front of us, give us lecture about matter Maliki. And when we have doubt or any question, we have to ask you, and you answer our question, can you please write for us a book so that we can, based on that book, when you are not with us, we can learn from you that book, and maybe tomorrow you will not be among us so that we can have our students and teach them for that book. Can you write us the book? That's why he said,
that was a desirable something about the currency, currency associated with them, along with certain certain of the key principles and riveted judgments and jurisprudence. According to the method and the way of Iman Malik Ibn Adam, and the distance to mention what Imam Malik he says, you have to write something like, because look, he mentioned the fiqh here, and he mentioned the sunnah. Sunnah is all about what the prophet say, and what he do, and what he allow someone to do in front of him. And he don't tell, oh, this is good, or oh, this is bad, like you came and do something in front of him, and he allow you to do. That also is a sunnah. His action, his deed, and what he allow sahabas they do in front of him. Like example, like when the sahabas they travel to one of the cities, they urge them to accommodate them, like give them place to stay. They don't want to even talk to them. They are disbelievers. They don't allow the Sahaba. They don't even welcome them or give them water or food or something or accommodation or something like that. But the Sahabas, they have Adam. They don't use their power or their knowledge or nothing like that. They just treat everyone according to their understanding, according to their label of knowledge according to their level of maturity they have. They just keep themselves away from them, isolate to the starting, the beginning of the city they are living. They was there up to around Maghrib. One man came, they, they hear noise. Someone is shouting. The man is bited by snake. And snake put some poison inside his body, he's about to die. And they need help. They do all their means, traditional means, they cannot make him feel better. So one of their kids run to the Sahaba, explain to them, oh, can you come help my father? What's wrong? Oh, my father is by a snake, and he is not, he's, he, my father is in bad shape. The Sahaba's kid, just read Fatiha. But where? He is feeling pain seven times. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Maliki, Yawm al-Din, Hiyaka, Na'abun, Wa Hiyaka, Nasna'in, Ihdina Sarat al-Mustaqim, Sarat al-Lazina, An'amta alayhim, Wa'ayrin, Ma'adubi alayhim, Wa'ladwalin. He repeated seven times. Oh, the man feel better. He opened his eyes, sit down, they give him water. He just feel like nothing not happened to him. Oh, they said, what is your reward? How much we will pay you? They give him sheep, like animals, certain amount of animals. The Sahabas, they took those animals to the Prophet Sallallahu When the Prophet see, he asked them, where are you getting this? He said, oh, we go to the city, with, uh, we urge them to give us place to live. They don't pay attention to us, they don't welcome us, but they have this problem, this, this, and this happened. They give all this as my pay because I read Fatiha on their sick passing. Or the prophet will, okay, distribute it, you give me my share. So, you see, did the prophet is the one who first start to read the Fatiha on someone has some on his body? No. But the Sahaba said, the prophet at the Sahaba, who teach you to do this? The Sahaba said, oh, he just came to my mind. I remember the day the Fatiha revealed to you. You, you was reciting the Fatiha. You tell us that there is none of the books revealed from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like half like Fatiha. That you tell us. So you know that the Fatiha, you tell us that the Fatiha is a medicine for your ummah to eat all their all what they are suffering from. So, I remember your that word, 
came to my mind that let me read Fatia on him. So I read a Fatia, he automatically feel better and relieved from whatever he was suffering. So that's why this scholar says, to read Fatia like that is a sunnah because the Prophet allowed the Sahabas to do. That is the one of the, the basic foundation of the Mazhab Imam Malik radiallahu anhu. You will read and touch there. You make like you be a blow on the bear. He suffer even your stomach or your head or your kids. Read Fatiha seven times. You blow on them. It's a barak and the blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. We will continue to go. Wa tariqatihi ma sahla sabila ما أشكل من ذلك من تفسير الراسخين وبيانا للمتفقهين لما رغبت فيه من تعليم ذلك للولدان كما تعلمه طروف القرآن ليسبق إلى قلوبهم من فهم الدين الله وشرعيه وما ترجى لهم بركته وتحمد لهم عاقبته فأجابته إلى ذلك لما رجوته لنفسي وذلك من الصواب من علم دين الله أو داع إليه in the same way that you teach them how to read the Holy Quran, so that they may first of all gain an understanding of the deed of Allah as a Muslim and the Sharia in their heart, which will hopefully bring them blessings and a good end result. I have responded to, to this out of the same hope of gaining for both myself and you something as the reward of those who teach the deed of Allah as a Muslim or call to them. وأعلم أن الخير القلوب أو أهل الخير وأرجى القلوب للخير لما لم يسبق الشر إليه وأول ما أعني به الناصحون ورغب ورغبوا في أجره الراغبون إيصال الخير إلى القلوب أولا المؤمنين ليرسخ فيها تنبيههم على معالم الديانة وحدود الشرعية ليرضوا عليها ما عليهم أن تعتقده من دين قلوبهم وتعمل به جوارهم فإنه يروى أن أن تعليم الصغار لكتاب الله يطفئ غضب الله وأن تعليم الشيء من في الصغر كالنفس في الحجر وقد مثل لك من ذلك ما ينتفعون إن شاء الله. Yes. 
يشرفون بعينه ويسعدون بإجكاده والأمل فيه وقد جاء أن يغمر بالصلاة للسبع سنين ويضرب عليها لأشر ويفرق بينهم في المضاجع فكذلك ينبغي أن يعلموا ما فرض الله على عباده من قول وعمل قبل بلوغهم ليأتي عليهم بلوغ وقد تمكن ذلك في قلوبهم وسكنت إلى أنفسهم وأنست بما يعملون به من ذلك الجوارحهم وقد فرض الله سبحانه وتعالى على قلوبهم عملا من الاعتقادات على الجوارح ظاهرة عملا من طاعة وسأفضل لك ما شرتت لك من ذكر باب بابا ليقرب من فهم المتعلم إن شاء الله تعالى وإياه أن تستخير به وتستعين ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه وسلم تسليما Kids should be teaching about the salam when they are saving. This is the hadith of the Prophet. That's why you see some brother you say, oh, I don't believe none of the mazahib. It's just like they are denying the sunnah. Before you deny something, no before. Like you see the brother, oh, like one brother came to me and said, Oh, Sheikh, you know me, I don't believe Mono Mazahib, Mashafi, or Maliki, or I just follow the Hadith and the Quran. I say, you still follow them. Hence, you are establishing the Hadith, the Sunnah, you know that you are establishing the Mazahib. Because those scholars, Imam Malik, Shafi, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ahmad, they, don't, they are not playing the gems or the, the knowledge they established in their books, they took it from the Hadith. Like now, you are listening to the Master Imam Malik. Before we finish, you will know that, oh, this book is all about Sunnah and the Quran. Because Imam Malik, when he's giving lecture in Medina, he makes sure that his student was aware that he told them, anything I say, go make your own research. If you see my work or the knowledge I give it to you, different with what you have, from an authentic hadith, throw my word, follow the hadith. Follow the hadith. Like if I say anything against whatever the Prophet wasallam, throw my word in the world, you take what the Prophet wasallam. He said because any person you can take from him and you can return, but the Prophet wasallam, whatever he told you, you have to take. Because وَمَا يَمْتِقْ عَنِ الْحَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا مُحْمِنْ يُوحَى He never speaks to his own desire. It's not like us. Sometimes when the shaykh is happy, he can say some words like he wants people to laugh or something. But the prophet is not like that. One day the one sahaba came to him. Like they from Sabit. Those who are the Qutab al-Wahim. They always wrote whatever, the ayah, any ayah revealed to the prophet, they will write. And what the hadith, they came to you say, the prophet, happy, we should write anything came from your mouth, whether you're anger or you're happy or you sad. He said, anything I say, wrote it, because I will never talk like for my own desire, or talk like this, like the funny or say something is not true. At any level or at any emotional, the prophet is, he will always speak the truth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why he told you that you, that is the basic fundamental to the end, to the, to the parents that you have to try to teach your kids about the salam and the basic knowledge of Islam when they are saving at age. When they are saving at age. And when they became 10, separate them from the bedrooms. We don't do that. That's why we see many kind of crazy things happening in the family. 
Some brothers will sleep with their sis own sisters. Some brothers will sleep with their own cousin sisters because of what? They grow together, watching crazy stuff together, so they will do haram. They need separation. Find a room for the boys, find room for the sisters. Don't say, oh, they're from the same father and mother. Shaitan don't know that. Because then we go to the school. Some schools here or anywhere, you know, that is the way Shaitan have some branch. They, they feel key to feel like that. It's not haram to make any connection with your sister. If you like it and she accept it, it's not haram. It's just like any woman you find in the street. Or it's just like any brother you find in the street. But they should know from you as a parent, you don't need to go to university. You don't need to memorize Quran to teach your kids for some basic knowledge from the script or from the hadith. As you, they explain to you, when you go home, establish it. Oh, I hear some say, oh, Fatima came. Muhammad, go sleep there. Fatima, oh, my God, and Baba, we have to be each other so that they... No, when it's time for sleep, come here, go there. Because why? To avoid Shaita. Let your boy know that he have to get some distance from the women. Because my father teach me even to have some distance from my own sister. So I have to get some distance from any woman I know. But when they start, look, when you go to the school, like I used to say in the Gambia, when you go to the school, grow women, grow men, they mix them. Bring them one care, they sit around each other. How you can mix the grain and the water. You say this is not touch each other. The crane, the light. When you throw, when you have water in your hand, you turn the cable of the crane in socky. So most of the time, that's why most of the students they don't have much knowledge like before. They will graduate, but they cannot have because all the time they're sitting with the sisters. The teacher is speaking in front of them, but they don't listen to none of what he is saying. Their mind on somewhere different with what the teacher is thinking. And they mean it. Those who are doing that, they mean it. They have their own agenda. So you can continue. <laughs> Okay. 
He had done so for you. Alhamdulillah, we're going to start back up, inshallah. Anybody that's listening online or on the phone, inshallah, we'll open it up for questions near the end. And uh, same thing with Brother Lee, we just said, if you have any questions, try to hold them off to the end, Thank you. 
أن متكون صفاته المخلوق وأسماه المخلصة كما كلم موسى بكلامه الذي هو صفات صفات ذاته لا خلق من خلقه وتجلى في جبل صار دكا من جلاله وأن القرآن كلام الله ليس بمخلوقه فبيده ولا صفة ليس بمخلوق بيده ولا صفة لمخلوق فينفذ والإيمان بالقدر خير والشر حلوه ومنه وكل ذلك قد قدره الله ربنا مقادير الأمور بيده ومصدرها من قضائه علم كل شيء قبل قوله فجرى على تقديره لا يكون من عباده قول ولا عمل إلا وقد قضاه سابقا لعلمه به ألا يعلم من خلق وهو اللطيف الخبير يضل من يشاء فيخزن بعدله ويهدي من يشاء ويوقفه بفضله كل يسير بتيسير إلى ما سبق من علمه وقدره ومن شقه من شقيه وسعيده تعالى أن يكون في ملكه ما لا يريد وأن يكون لأحد منه غني أو يكون خالق لكل شيء إلا وهو رب العباد ورب أعمالهم ومقادير لحر كانت وآجالهم بائدة الرسل إليهم قامت الحجة عليهم ثم ختم الرسالة نذارة والنبوة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and his magnificent He spoke to Nabi Musa with his speech, which is an, with, which is an attribute of his essence and not something created. Well, okay. stop He mentioned that Allah SWT speak to the Musa alayhi salam So we can imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how Musa can, Musa can hear Allah SWT's speech the scholars say, has human nature, like me and you, when Allah SWT speaks to us, we are not able to hear nothing. Our head, our, the voltage of our, our hearing is very low to enable us to hear what Allah SWT when He is speaking to us. But Musa A.S. Allah SWT is giving the voltage of the a thousand man, like a thousand persons, and every strong man, you take from their left and right all their hearing voltage. You arrange them and make it one voltage. They put in this right side and put the one on this left side. When he was to see that, when Allah SWT is speaking to the Musa, now the Musa can hear what Allah SWT is saying to him. But like the ordinary hearing voltage, what we have in our nose, we cannot hear the voice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our head will explode. That is why Allah SWT gave it to the Musa at the voltage of his inner. That if he he was like 10 voltage, he made like millions at the once. At the millions and the other times. So that the Musa can enable to hear what Allah SWT is speaking to him. And Musa Allah SWT was speaking to him without no translation. There's no one between them. No degree or no exigence. That is the position. And the whole of Allah SWT give it to the Musa alayhi salatu wa salam. But Allah Musa alayhi salatu wa salam was used to more have enjoyment when Allah SWT is speaking to him. He's in charge. One day he came to Tuluzina. He said, oh Allah, always when I came here, I will speak with you. I hear your voice. I never see you. And I know 
the feeling I get when you see it. So if I have a feeling about your feeling, what about the feeling? The feeling I get when you spoken to me, I know that to see you, maybe that will be more better. Because like you have a friend, if the friend just her voice was a his voice make you feel something inside your body. What about if you see him or you see him? So he said, Allah, now I want to see you. Now it's just like Musa we say, oh, I'm tired of speak, uh, speaking with you and I love you so much. And you sent me as a messenger, but I never see you. I want you to give me one chance today and to see that in Egypt. It's a mountain in Egypt, they name it Tulsina. I went to that mountain when I was studying Egypt. That is the mountain Musa wasalam, used to stand and speak with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, okay, Musa, you say you want to see me, okay. No problem. But do you prepare yourself to see me? Musa said, yes. But Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, the scholars say every day he will answer the question, almost 70 questions to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything he saw, you say, oh, what is, why did you create this like this? Oh, Allah, because he means it because he wants to hear his voice. So he means that he is not necessarily a question. He will say, oh, why do you put this here? Why do you put this here? Go to the next side. Why do you put this here? Like another tree. Like one day, he came to the, uh, the seaside. He got to the beach side. He found uh, the boys are inside the water. They're playing, swimming inside the water. When one of their friends is sitting outside, he's disabled. He cannot do nothing. But the boys, they give him their clothes to wash their stuff for them. Musa was going, he found the boy. He's sitting by himself, all his friends inside the water, enjoying himself. He looked at the woman. He said, Why do you have to go back? He said, No, look at my hand and my way. I can't do can nothing inside the water. Musa said, Oh, no. Why do you make all his friends can do this when he cannot do it? And he went to do it. Allah SWT respond, Musa He said, Musa, I do this for my own wisdom, hikmah. I know that this boy, if he becomes perfect like this boy, he will be a killer. He will kill many people, innocent people. That is why I want him to go to the Jannah. I make him to be a slave. But when he become like other human being, strong like them, he will be he will be trouble in the city. No one can have peace from him. He will be very stubborn, and the stubbornness he will have, maybe can take him to the hell fire. So I decide that let me make him as a handicap so that he can live like that with iman. Because when he became perfect, he, he would not worship me. Musa said, oh, Allah, no, okay. But I want you to give him that. Make his heart perfect, his leg, everything. Let him try the water first. Musa was standing in the seaside. Look at the kids inside the water. When Allah SWT returned, the boy, everything on him, he throw himself in the water, try to try to throw himself to his friends and press them inside the water. They cannot breathe. Fight with them. Start killing them inside the water. Allah SWT said, Musa, you see, this is the secret. That's why I was telling you I have to return him like how he was before. 
So that's why when he was to Rusina, he wanted to speak to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, Musa, okay, you have to look at the mountain. Look at this mountain behind you. It's a big mountain. Look at the mountain. It is stable, steady. In his position, you know that you will see. We can say, a just little percentage just removed from the moon, the night of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the mountain. The mountain sake, the most affected and so on. Just little, when Musa awake, He said, Allah, I'm so sorry for what I have seen. The man said, Musa, let me be your friend and talk to you. You just prepare yourself to see me in judgment day, for you can be able to see me. Hence, you are in this one. Then you are in the life. But we will say, Allah, what I tell them, I'm going to be Because between the label 
the one level of this sky and another level is consummate at 500,000 years. What is that you feel? This is going to say, even you take your plane, still now the plane will run 500,000 years. You see, how you can be doing this about it? Similar to Buddha. That is the end of last level of this sky. You bring it here, whatever is about that, that is Allah and His Khususiya, His privacy. Even the Jubri never cross that level. That's why when the Prophet came to Sitra in Muntaha, the Jubri, the Allah said, and the Prophet said, Jubri, how can you leave me here as a friend, take me from back? Bring me here. And you say, now, I have to continue my journey by myself. I never been here. See, in certain years, I never saw them before. The Jibreel say, oh, this family flow, that is my position. If I move even one step, the moon of Allah will destroy me. That is Sitra Timota. The Jibreel told him that, I can leave from Sitra Timota. To you, it is very urgent. Just close your eyes and open you will see. It is urgent. He said, You will be close before you open, you will see yourself. From here to the time. Sometimes, if I want, I can do it. It is not much urgent. So, that is, we have been blessed that Allah so much love, so clear, so has seen them. Your iman will increase. So you can continue. Know the attribute of something created which must therefore come to a head. Belief to the great. The prior decree of good and evil. Also include his belief in the decree both the good of it and the evil of it. The sweet of it and the bitter of it. All of this has been decreed by law and the law of the our Lord. You see sweetness in your life, you turn Allah. You see difficulty, you say Allah. That's it. Continue. <laughs> the way things are divided is eternally, eternally in His hands. The hand is the way that the way they happen is the course of His decree. The things, the way things is happening to us is decided by Allah. Wa ma tashafuna illa ayyasha Allah wa ahlu taqwa wa ahlu nafsi. This is the most important of Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides I will be here since before I go on. I will make the noise. It's happened from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decisa. So the way things is happening in our life, today you have, tomorrow you pray. Today you have, tomorrow you pray. Today you seek, tomorrow you pray. All those things go by Allah, we will subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh-huh. If you know all things before they come into existence, and then they place in the way he has already decided. The most important thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to believe him. He know before he's happened. And the way it will be happened and when it will be happened. Don't, don't mind nobody. With their own technologies, they don't know what to do. Others want to put some pride on them. Like, they can think, oh, we have to do this, your technology so us. It's just like a promise from them, but they, they don't know what to do. They don't know. And nobody will know what to do. You don't know what you're going to get tomorrow, what's going to happen to your good, what's going to happen to your bad, and you don't know where you'll be there. That's in the knowledge of Allah, put him in the pocket and close in the case. Nobody can know that. What you're going to get tomorrow, whether good or bad, and which place you will die. Whether this certain state or another state, or how you will die, nobody knows. You can be poor today, tomorrow you become rich. You can be rich today, tomorrow you fall. 
the things is hands of Allah. Leave the things in His hand. You can have peace of mind. That is why He said, "Hadith in Kodesh in Adam, you will struggle to achieve certain things. I don't, I don't, I, I don't uh, decide those for you. You will struggle all day and night. You want to be rich. You want to be senator. You want to be male. You want to be." Most famous one, but if others want that I'm going to decide it for you, that cannot happen. To you. He said, You will do your effort and know that you will never get nothing unless what I decide for you. Or what I want you to get. And anything you get also, don't think that it's your effort. It's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing that his servants say or do which he has not decreed and does not have knowledge of. Does not he who creates know when he is slow and is aware? The prior position of people. He leads astray whoever he will, and in his justice he bases them in his guide whoever he will, and in his generosity grants them success. In that way, everyone is eased by help <coughs> to what he already has knowledge of and has previously decreed as to whether they are to be among the fortune or the miserable. A soldier of the law as was well as power. He is the most above their, above their being anything he does not desire in his kingdom, or that there should be anything not dependent on him, or that there should be any be any creator of anything other than him, the Lord of all of all people, the Lord of their actions, the one who decrees their movement in in the time of their death. <clears throat> Belief in the messengers and the holy prophet Muhammad. The sending of messengers. He has sent messengers to them in order that they should have no argument against them. The final message. You need to send it now. 
And anyone read your letter, see your signature, and stamp it, they will know that, oh, he told me whatever he has. But they say, oh, Khatim means, they say, oh, the prophecy just now said Khatim. Khatim, like, why do we have Khatim? Khatim, because we want our hand to be nice. Like, okay, you married a woman, sometimes when they're happy, they have your Khatim. When you make them upset, they pull it out and throw it to you. I don't need your, 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 your ring no more. You come, oh, take your ring again. You will come to be nice. Oh, put your ring in your hand. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamadi described the Prophet Fatima and Nabi They described it like that. They used to play. Some people might those who don't know the grammar language in Arabic. They all come here. You know what the Quran says? Khatim. His mother is just like this. So sometimes you can see the new one and remove this and put the spy. They create so called the prophets. Among them, some of their prophets, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad, called her, he's a prophet, and he died in the bathroom. But the heart of an Nabi'in, that is the meaning the prophet has in his bath here. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stamp it there. He has a stamp on his back. That is Khatam al Nabiyyin wa Imam al Mursal. That stamp from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He turned it on his back here, showing him that you are the last. The last of the letter I will send to the mankind, the jinn and the mankind. He stamped it. He make it well, it's where you put the stamp of the letter. Where you write it, he stamped it here. That is why some of the Sahabas, they came, they were struggling to see that happen. If you want to wear this, sometimes they come, look where, where that happen is. One Sahaba came to him, he said, the Prophet, I want to see the happen you have in your back. The Prophet saw him. He said, look, when you see the ink, it's just like a gold. And that fatimu, anyone see that fatimu, you will never go to the hellfire in your eyes. The prophet has it. That is the heart of a Nabi. This is an important knowledge. We know that why the Allah SWT is, he is the one. He ended the prophecy for the Muhammad SAW. Khatamu, it's not like a word. They put on his back also. The prophet has it. So that means that there is no prophet will care who ever tried. And there are some people here in America, and a few years ago, they say some of them are the prophets, they are they, they, like, um, they are the prophets, they, 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 they said by Allah. I think so, you might be here about those people. Elijah Muhammad, or if you are the, and then if we cannot say Elijah Muhammad, we cannot, you know what Muhammad means? Mm -hmm. The prophet they call him, when you go to the sky, the prophet they call him Ahmad. But when you are in Islam, it's Muhammad. The Indians, they know his name Ahmad. We know his name is Muhammad. They all from each other. Ahmad, Muhammad. <coughs> So how can Elijah Muhammad be made that coffee? Or anyone else? Can they themselves as a prophet? Where did you get that from? How many times did, did, did the angels came to them? What is their Quran? What is the book they came from Allah? So they get it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we will know that any group, whether they have followers, they have money, they have any fame. When you hear they say that, oh, who they believe is a prophet, take your stops, you run away. You know that they are evils. You know they are saying, please, stand in front of you and speak with you. Only the prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, have that title. No one will get that title. 
only the last day of this world. There is no prophet with the king again. Only God is through the book. He said down with his wife and my means of him he explained his upright deeds and guided people through the straight path. Belief in the resurrection and judgment. The last hour. Also part of what must be believed is that the hour is coming. There is no doubt about it. Resurrection of the dead. It must be believed that Allah as will rise up all who have died. As he brought them into existence the first time that they will be brought back again. Divine reward. Multiplication of good action. He believes that Allah as will multiplies the reward of the good actions of his believing servants. Pardoning wrong actions. <clears throat> he pardons them for their, for their major wrong actions by virtue of their repentance. And forgives them, forgives them for their minor wrong actions by virtue of their avoidance of the major wrong actions. Those who do not repent are subjected to his will. Those who do not repent of their major wrong actions become subjected to his will. He does not forgive anything being associated with him, but he forgives anything other than that to whoever he will. Okay. Binari wa akhrajahu minha imanahu fa adakalahu bihi jannatahu wa man amila bis wa man ya'mal miskala zorratim khairan yara wa man ya'mal miskala zorratim شرا يرى ويخرج منها بشفاعة النبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم من شفع له من أهل الكبائر من أمته وأن الله سبحانه قد خلق الجنة فأعدها دار القلوب لأوليائه وأكرمهم فيها بالنظر إلى وجه الكريم وهي التي أحبت منها آدم نبيه وخليفته إلى الأرض بما سبق في سابق علمه وخلق النار فأعدها دار الخلود لمن كفر به وألهد في آياته وكتبه ورسله وجعلهم محبوبين من رؤيته وأن الله تبارك وتعالى يجيه يوم القيامة والملك صفا من أرض الأمم والحسابها وعقوبتها وثوابها وتودع الموازين لوزن الأعمال العباد فمن ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون they have, and by this he will cause them to enter his heart. Whoever does it out of the way of will will see it. The intercession of the Holy Prophet. Any of the, any of the community of the Holy Prophet who has committed major wrong actions and for whom he intercedes will be brought out of the fire by his intercession. The afterlife, the garden, and the fire. The garden. Allah has one job has created the garden and has made it rain as an everlasting abode for his friends. He will honor them in it with the vision of his noble faith. This is the same word from which he sent thou not be. Adam, the prophet, and Khalid, to the earth, which he, which was as it had already been decreed in his foreknowledge. The fire. He has created the fire and has made it ready as an everlasting abode for those who disbelieve in him and deny his signs and bulk and messengers. Mm-hmm. And, and he keeps them real from seeing him. Tales of the resurrection, <clears throat> the coming of Allah Azawajal and the angels. Allah Azawajal will come on the day of rising together with the angels rank upon rank. Precipitation of people. All the different people are confronted with their account and their punishment or reward. The vows. The balances will be set up to weigh people's actions. Whoever, whoever actions are heavy in the balance, they are the successful. Okay. We, uh, in this part, 
you know, the first chapter we are in uh, Rizal, and he's talking about Akida. All what he's explaining to us is part of our belief, our Akida. Know that there will be judgment day. We cannot be like these believers. They say, oh, if you pass, born me is done. There are nothing after that. No. We Muslims, we have to believe that there is a judgment day. There is a hellfire, there is a jannah. That's why we, we are here. And that's what I say. He creates the hellfire for the those who are disbelievers like Kufar. Because of why they disobey his order. And know that when you go to the hellfire, you will be there for him. Unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put his mercy on you, take you from there, take you to the jannah. But they say, those who have la ilaha illallah in their heart, if they don't worship Allah, they will not remain in the hellfire. But who wants to go to the hellfire even one second? No one. The hellfire is also described in the Quran. In the heart of the Shara in Kalkasim, that is the hellfire. And the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he created the hellfire, he surrounds the hellfire, the fence surrounds the hellfire, is happiness, enjoyment. That's so why you see them, they are dancing. They say they are they, they worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Before they have been, have some new music, dancing, shouting. Because of, to go to the hellfire is all about happiness, enjoyment. That is some of mankind's things that the life is about just how I can enjoy myself. But the Jannah. Surrounded by hardship. That's what you see. We Muslims, everyone has something to go through. We all have our problems. Everyone should complain what he is going through. Don't think that you will have 100% happiness in your life as a believer, as a Muslim. Because this life is a crazy for you. It's just like the jail. When you are in the jail, have you had access to God, whoever you want to call? No. Have you had access to dress the way you want to dress? No. Because why? They think that they are stretching you. Like they, they want to train you Good attitude so that when you get out from that jail, you can be careful what you will do, what you will say. It's just like the, the dunya in our life. We should know that the Jannah is created and the Jahannam also is there and all have his own people will go there. And we know that the Tawbah, the return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the door is open always before the closing. But as we see the people like you give some recovery, check the law is hard. Oh, I'm not drinking no more. The Saturday came, you go to the club, drink. Then another Saturday, before between Saturdays, you become Muslim. Oh, I'm not drinking. You do it once, oh, I'm not going to drink no more. You do it again, return to the cup. In the land, you're not going to super couple. Tumba, I'm going to super couple. You have to be very careful about Iman. That's why I say, those who be return to Allah for anything they was doing wrong, you live it like a month. Hide yourself, do it again. Come back again, do it again. Allah says, if you want to play with you, if you don't care for you, I will not accept your trouble. And the Tawbah is not for those who live with the Kufu. Now they know that the time is done, like they are about to die. They say, oh, I have to return to Allah. And they are, they are dead, dead. 
Allah SWT is saying, I don't accept those kinds of trauma. Like Fir'aun. Fir'aun. When Allah SWT wants to destroy me in the sea, he said, Allah wants to be led you, Ah, man, it be he. The Allah SWT sent the Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam to throw the death from inside his mouth. So that he cannot say, La ilaha illallah, because Allah will not accept him. Because he will establish the righteousness and Islam in his life. So we have to know that Tawbah is a chance to us to return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we do Tawbah, let me stick on doing the good things. Because you cannot keep back and forth being the straight, being the nasty, being the straight, being the nasty. You don't know when you're going to die. And most of the time, the death can keep to you in the street. And most of the time, your last deed is very important in your life. Your last years in your life is very important. Your last days in your life is very important. You can be more, more, more criminal in your standing of your life, killing, drunk, all those things. But the day you took your shahada, Allah SWT will give you for all those things. Okay? Like a new one thing. But after that, you have to speak. Do the right deed. Go move forward. Don't keep playing. Then you left tomorrow night. Left right. Left right. When you left again, then you are left side. And you don't have nothing to complain. When Allah gives you to go to the country. And the Kabbalah, he mentioned the Kabbalah is, you know, we, we want to know because he's a fake. He can read, but certain things I have to uh, explain to you. Kabbalah it means the big things. Kabbalah. Those things, we all have to be careful to commit those things. It's among those things, the woman to disobey your husband without noticing is a big thing. The child or the boy or uh, sister to obey your, uh, disobey your parents. Put them down. Treat them bad. Like the way we are seeing now. For cooking one day. Only one reason you have to obey your uh, parents if they advise you not to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you want to took your shahada, your mother said, Oh, you're not gonna be Muslim in this house. They all know my will be Muslim. Or father said, You're not gonna be Muslim in this house. Say, I will be Muslim. You're not gonna read Quran in this house, say I will read Quran. You should not pray in this house, say I will pray in this house. Because what? That's between you. You cannot follow anyone to disobey Allah's Prophet. But when your mother say, oh, son, or girl, don't go with this brother. I see the behavior he has is not good for you. When you disobey them, anything happens to you, Allah will punish you. We have to take their advices. So it's among the big sins all of kill someone, innocent people. It's a big sin. So who accuse Islam as a terrorist or some Muslims? Those brothers also, you see, they are killing people for the name of Islam. Some of them are not Muslim. They are double agents. They are created by our enemies. Make them look like good brothers in Islam. Have their kufir and their dress up in Islam. But they are not Muslims, though, so they create them, give them weapons. How we can imagine where the ISIS have all those tanks and weapons, and they don't have no tanks and weapons hunting? Where they get money? The guns they steal from Syria and Iraq, who will go for make make them business? Those Toyotas, those new brown cars, very expensive. Where are they get? Who helped them to get? You know that something is going on. 
they lose them, train them, recruit them, but some of them they are soldiers, even they are recruited by some some nation they are soldiers. Because to make Islam bad shape or for them, those who admire and those who have intention to enter Islam so that they can back home. Be careful. You see Muslims. That is the way also to fight Islam. So that's why. But a real Muslim will not kill or ever think to kill even an innocent one person. Man katala nafsan bivayri nafsin fa ka'annama katala nafsa jamiha wa man ahiyaha fa ka'annama fi masjid. Whoever kill an innocent one person, the sin you commit it's just like you kill all mankind. Believers and disbelievers. It's just like you, you, you throw the bomb to kill all living things. You see, you will get one person. Even the Prophet, when he got to the battlefield, he had some, uh, he captured some disbelievers. He gives his order to Umar bin Khattab, he said, Umar, don't force them to take their shahada and make sure they have their food and make sure they take shower if they need and make sure you show them the bathroom if they want to use the bathroom. Make sure they sleep good and they eat good. Make sure they remain healthy as you can them. And don't force them. Don't force them. Oh, you got to take your shahada or I'll shoot you. No. He said, don't force them. Keep them good. And when the time is up, Rasul Salah will give his order for Umar to release them to go. Some of them, when they release them, when they take some certain steps, they will not go, oh, no. this Muslim, they can't kill me, I think they will kill me, they will kill me good like this. Oh, they are, what they call as a Muhammad is a prophet, they know that, oh, this is a good man. Let me go back to him. They took their shahad. Like when this this ayah came to him, he asked him, "Rasul, what did Imam Zira say to him? Let him tell him what Nasr did to us. What now he asked him to be the man? Oh, you prophet, Salaam alaikum. Extend my message to the man first. Don't fear nobody. And you know that your protection is in my hand from today. Before this, the beginning of his message, his risala." They used to guide him as they guide our senators and others. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the prophet feel bad because the kuffar, when he passed them, then we say, oh no, he says he's a prophet, but he looked like a king. Why did they guide him? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he told Jibreel, tell him that I guarantee him that I will protect him. So then, and Umar bin Khattar, he was the top security officer for his personal security. He's the one who will employ like some Sahaba today. You will be around the prophet. You have to sleep here, you have to do this. You make sure that he's safe. So, when this I came, the prophet just said to Sahaba today, I don't even know where you are. Oh, come you and go by yourself in Mecca or Medina. The Jews and misbelievers, they want to keep you safe. No, don't worry about that. I don't see myself as a guy that prophet. I don't know if the prophet. The one that me, I'm working for him, he will protect me. But you know, yes, when he goes to prophet someone, Umar was wondering oh, what is going to happen. So the prophet goes, they from the battle, jihad, the prophet go to sleep because the, the, the respect they give you to him as your shape or anyone, when he's sleeping, they have to give him some distance. This should not be optimal like the shape or your teacher or your imam is sleeping, he just go around shouting or that's not the rest. So when the Prophet Sallallahu is sleeping, the, the woman used to give him some distance and but they would put their eyes on him. So today the Prophet said, no, go sleep, woman, tell everyone to sleep. He was sleeping. The one of this believer, they pay him money. They say, you have to bring the Prophet head today. They bring some money for him. He just came and come to the Prophet Sallallahu with his weapons. Want to cut his head. When he does his hand, the hand still like that. He cannot move and go nowhere. 
You just do like that to cut the head. The hands stick like that. He cannot move his hand up or down, and himself cannot move. His hands they were sleeping. And just like just where you can see someone on standing on him, want to kill him. You say, what happened? Oh, he said, Muhammad, I just can't kill you. But I want to cut your head, you were sleeping. My hand is prophesy, okay. Just so someone wake from the sleep of Abu Khabar. You know that he don't have no way to stand for nothing. He just came, he said, oh, yes, thank you so much. You want to kill the prophet? You will go now. The prophet said, no, wait, come on, hold on. He said, oh, look at him. This man wants to kill him. He wants to show this man he wants here. He said, what do you want to talk about now? You want to make this one living there? As he used to do? No, that's not going to happen. We have to kill him. The prophet said, no, listen. He said, the prophet said, Raise your hand down. The man break his hand down. Because after the prophet speaks to his hand, it is not, he cannot move his hand. The prophet said, why you came here? He said, oh, the compound of grace, they give me no money. And I promised them I have to bring your head clean. The prophet said, that was your journey, that was your evidence. The prophet said, okay. Why are you going to kill me? Why are you kill me? Why are you standing? Why are you not cut my head? He said, I don't know. I just came, want to kill you. It's just like I saw the angels standing in front of me. So the scare made me, I cannot move or speak for the rest of my life. The prophet said, okay, calm down, take your time, go your way. I shall give you. The only monster stood there. Because he just ready to kill the man. After the man go two steps, he think that the cool you will hide in this world a passing like this man. I just came, I want to kill him. But I can't. I have the intention to kill him. And now he treat me like this, come to me guys and forgive me. He let me go. And he cannot even force me to enter in his team. The man know that, oh, this man will be something. He's not like any ordinary man. He came back to the Muhammad. When he's coming, Salam Fala Umar said, oh, maybe he's coming back. He came, he said, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Why he took the shahada? Did they force him or they cut the head like you see so-called Muslim are doing, kill disbelievers, cut their head, Bomb people because you wanted them to be Muslim. If that is the history of the Prophet, that's why I say, whoever you see, they are doing that, have two minds on them. They are not Muslim. They can get by some politician to make Islam dirty in front of disbelievers. The book of action. People will be given pages on with their action or recording. Whoever is given his book in his right hand will be given an easy accounting. But whoever is given his book behind his back, they will burn in the fire. Burn in a fire. The rock, the bread is true, and people will cross it according to their actions. Those who cross it and achieve safety from the fire do so as just speed, while the actions of others cast them to, to the destruction in the fire. No, 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 no. وأن الله تعالى يجيء يوم القيامة والملائكة صفا للأرض الأمم والحساب وحسابها وحكوماتها وصحاب وصوابها وتوضع الموازين بوزن الأعمال العباد فمن ثقلت موازين فأولئك هم المفلحون ويؤتى صحائف بالأعمال فمن أوتي كتابه بيمينه فسوف يحاسب حسابا يسيرا ومن أوتي كتابه وراء ظهري فأولئك يسلون سعيرا وأن الله وأن الصراط حتى حق يجوزه العباد بقدر أعمالهم فناجون متفاوتون في سرعة النجاة عليهم من النار جهنم 
wa qaumun aw qatuhum fiha a'maluhum wa imanu bi hawdi rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam taruddu ummatahu la yadma min sharb man sharaba minhu wa yuzaduhu anhu wa man wa yuzaduhu anhu man baddala wa ghayra anna al-iman qawl bil lisan wa al-ikhlas bil qalb wa amal bil jawari yazidu bi ziyadati al-a'mal wa yanqus bi naqsiha fa yakunu fiha naqs wa biha ziyadah wa la yukmil al-qawl al-iman illa bil amal wa qawl wal amal illa yalihi wa la qawl wa la amal wal niyya illa bil niyya la qawl wa la amal wal niyya illa muwafaqatan li sunnati wa an la yukfar ahad bi dhanb min ahli al qiblati wa an al shuhada ahya'an inda rabbihim yurzaqun wa arwah ahlu al sa'adati baqiyatun na'imatun ila yawm yub'athun wa arwah ahlu al shafa'a shaqawatu mu'addab ila yawm al din wa an al mu'minun yaqtunun fi quburihim wa yas'alun yasbitu Allah alladhi amanu bi qawli thabit fi al hayati al dunya wa yuqil akhirah wa anna ala ibadihi hafazat yaqtubun a'malahum ولا يشكت شيئا من ذلك من علم ربهم وان ملك الموت يقبل الارواح باذن ربهم وان خير القرود قرن الذين وراء الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم
on people's emails because it's beyond your knowledge. You don't know. Like one Sahaba, they was in the battlefield. He was about to kill one disbeliever. The disbeliever said, "Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad." He killed him. When he was with one of his friends upon the Sahaba, he said, "Oh, why are you killed? He took the shahada." He said, "Oh, don't disturb me." Because he feared me, you know that I'm about to kill him, that's why he took the shahada. He said, no, no, but the prophet said, we should not do that. He said, no. Why he didn't take his shahada before the battle? But now I'm about to kill him. He took the shahada, that's why he killed him. He got to the prophet. The sahaba don't feel comfortable. He said, oh, prophet, today we was in the battlefield. My friend, he killed someone. I don't feel comfortable because before he killed him, he took the shahada. But he, that shahada don't stop him to kill him. He killed him, and I explained to him, he cannot understand me. The prophet called him to come. He said, why you kill that? He said, oh, no, he took his shahada because I'm about to kill him. He is scared about me, that is why. The prophet said, no, go do your talma. Who tell you that? And did you know what is inside his heart? No more. Why you kill him? The Quran came. وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ أَلْقَى إِلَيْكُمُ السَّلَامَ لَكْسَ مُؤْمِنًا Whoever give you salam and give you shahada, don't ever tell him that you are not a Muslim. He be a Muslim fasik. He can be a Muslim hypocrite. He can be fasik. But he is still under the category of Muslim. Like a woman to teach her shahada. She's not covered. We are like these believers who part. You still cannot say, oh, she's a Catholic. No. Shahada opened the door of Islam for her. But she is it. She's not practicing Islam. But that will not make people look at her like she's Catholic or she's one of the disbelievers. No. Or the brother took his Shahada. He's not coming to the masjid. Whoever not performing Salah, he is not Muslim. That is out of conversation. That is out of anything. Al-Farqu al-Lazi bayna wa bayna huwa salah. Wa man aqamaha wa kan aqama di. No Muslim can perform in Salah. Three days, there is no out of Sharia. If you are a man, three days, not performing your Salah, you have to Islam. You have to make your tower and come back to the day. You can continue. In the grave, the spirit of the force of the fortune. The spirit of the fortune remain on good until the day they are raised again. In the grave, the spirit of the miserable. The spirit of the miserable are tormented until the day of judgment. The questioning in the grave. The believers are tried and questioned in the grave. Allah makes those who believe firm by giving them firm words in the life of this world and the next world. Okay, and Islam also has uh, what we learn from our life. The fit is not like a hadith. Hadith we can read, but the fit you have to bear much. This chapter, what we want to know before you just a gather for this. He's talking to you the basic fundamental of the appear. Like, first of all, you have to know that it's a big big things, like if someone sick, disobey your parents, trouble, the alcohol, any relationship with the woman is out of marriage, all those things are kabali. And you should know that after your death, there is another life called Bajak. You have to have that appear also. The third thing, you have to know there is a punishment in your grave. And there is a questioning in the grave also, come by the angel Munkar wanna kill. After they bury you, before they left, they will come automatically in your grave. That is why he's telling you. When you bury your friend before you left, 
from his grave, you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help him to answer the question correctly. That is the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we have to believe those things. There is a question in the grave. Even some Muslims will have a punishment of the grave. That is not that is not meaning that they will not go to the Jannah. That is, let Allah forgive them for their sins, some of their sins. If you don't want to see the grave, you know, there's a medicine the Prophet gives to the Sahaba that can save you to see any punishment in your grave. Who knows that? There's a surah in the Quran, the Prophet gave it to the Sahaba. Surah Yeah. Like the Imam says, Surah al Tabarak al Nadi bi Yadi al Mulk. Wa huwa ala kulli shayin qadir. Al Nadi khalaq al Mulk wa al Hayat li yadluakum ayyukum ahsan amal. Wa huwa nafsiz nafsiz. It's a tati ayah. The Prophet said, Whoever read this surah every night before you sleep, in your life period, you will not see any punishment in your grave. You will just go sleep there, hold, see your judgment, enjoy yourself, the judgment day, you go to the heaven. Tabarak is the real heaven. It's a touchy ayah. But it's difficult also to stick on it and then go straight on. He will not take you like five minutes. He will not take me like three minutes to, to read it like if I want to be fast for it. It is not more than five minutes. But sometimes the Shaitan will get to know in time or make you forget about it because he wants to give you the punishment. Shaitan, Shaitan will move. But the day you go to our grave, you say, oh, I regret it. If I know, I regret it. Look, look how sad it is. But in, when we have our freedom, it is very difficult. Often in English, like some, some they wrote like Arabic in English, like what is the name of those Quran? Okay. Brother, sisters, try to do your best every night you read this Surah. Because you don't know where you're going to go. And the graveyard is very dark. And there's something we don't even imagine then. But this is the things will save us from the punishment or anything we scare and make for death. Yeah. The angels, the recording angels. People have, have recorded angels over them who write down their actions. Nothing people do is against the knowledge of the Lord. The angel of death. The angel of death sees the people spared by the permission of his Lord. According. The best generation. The best generation are those who saw the Rasulullah. So we are the best generation. The, the prophet. The, the Prophet Sahaba are the best generation after those who came, those who came, but we are the generation, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that people will came, they will love me so much and they don't see me. They will believe my word and when I was speaking, they was not there. The Sahaba are the best generation, those who live with him. That is why Islam has different categories. You have Anbiya, Wal Mursaleen, the Prophets, and the messengers. You have Sahabas. You have Aulia. You have Salihi. That's the form. And what is so called, we can say 